Hi everyone, thanks for viewing this video. My name is Mike van Telg and I've recently uh, graduated at the Eindhoven University of Technology. For my thesis I spent a lot of time using Grasshopper to model and optimize uh, a tensegrity dome structure. And using what I've learned there, I thought it would be interesting to explore the possibilities of optimizing several structural engineering problems. So this video should be the first installment of a small series of ex explorations. Um, however, today I want to deal with a common um, engineering problem, which is the optimization of a simply supported plane truss. The truss in this example consists of a bottom and a top cord, which are connected by a number of diagonals. In this example I've chosen to model a 2D truss, but this could of, of course also be uh, done for any type of other uh, truss. There are two supports at either end of the truss. Uh, and in order to make uh, variations, we can change a number of the number of segments uh, in the truss, like this. We can also change the height of the truss. And we can, of course, also change the uh, span length of the truss. In order to keep the calculation simple, only, uh, uh, only one load can be applied here. And this is a line load, which is redistributed uh, to the upper nodes of the truss. So changing the number of segments redistributes the point load uh, on the truss accordingly. We can also see that there are uh, three different choices for the section size of the bottom and top cord and uh, for the diagonals. Uh, the sections are actually uh, rectangular hollow sections, which are available on the Dutch market. And if I click here, you can see a list uh, from which you can uh, choose. So you can always be assured that when you select a section, that it is a viable section size. If we want, uh, if we want to make a calculation by uh, turning on the solver, we can see uh, what the normal forces are in the different sections of the truss. For the top cord, we can see that uh, both uh, tensile and compression forces are present. The same applies to the diagonals. And for the bottom cord, only tension forces are present. Uh, this is even sh uh, seen better in uh, Oasis GSA. So this is a uh, example that I've uh, pre-prepared. This shows uh, the normal forces in a very nice graphical way. To check uh, whether the chosen section, uh, sections can actually carry the forces, some unity check values are displayed in these panels over here for the different elements. So by choosing the best sections for the different element types, we can optimize the truss according to the mass of the total structure. Uh, and it stands to reason that a lower mass will result uh, in a cheaper st uh, structure due to many reasons. Uh, so uh, in all different variations of a truss design, uh, we should want to end up with a uh, lowest possible mass for the structure. You could include costs if you like. Uh, but this is this is not done here. Based on this property, we can uh, do an al automated optimization in Grasshopper using Galapagos, which is a uh, optimization tool that is provided with Grasshopper. Uh, but only one uh, problem remains, however, and this is that the sections are actually used best when it, they are loaded about uh, 90 to 100 percent of their capacity. So we need some way to explain to the Galapagos editor that the unity check values uh, should be within 0.9 uh, to 1 for the best uh, values uh, for the optimization. And I've, had, I've done this by including a penalty factor P. Uh, and this is a correction factor which is multiplied by the mass of the structure in order to obtain a judging factor which Galapagos can use. The penalty factor is a factor which is instigated when the unity check value of an element falls outside of the boundaries uh, stated by these sliders here. So again, uh, ideally, we would want to use each section for about uh, 90 to 100 percent, uh, resulting in these boundaries. When an actual uh, unity check value falls ex outside of these boundaries, a penalty arises. Uh, and depending on the distance between the ac actual unity check value and the boundary, the penalty will be small or large. When all the elements fall within the boundaries, no penalty is actually needed. So in that case, we would see uh, a 1 displayed in this panel. 
Using the setup, we can do uh, an optimization. And note that I've not included the node uh, displacements in this optimization. But with a little work, you could easily implement this into the algorithm. Also note that I used the Smart Structural Interpreter plugin for Oasis GSA. And this plugin is made by uh, John at Geometry Gym. And it sends uh, structural data to GSA. Uh, and after the calculation uh, in GSA is finished, it also retrieves the data so that it can uh, be displayed in Grasshopper. I think this is a, a very useful plugin for structural engineers. Okay, let's uh, take a look at what happens when we use the uh, Galapagos editor. Uh, I've already, I've actually pre-recorded this video and sped it up a bit since uh, I'm running this on a uh, old notebook and you can imagine that uh, this um, can make the process uh, a bit slower than needed. Uh, I've chosen to let the algorithm design a 60 meter long span for me and there is a 30 kN per meter line load applied. Galapagos is allowed to change the section sizes of the different elements as well as the height of the truss and the number of segments which are incorporated. Of course you could do this by hand but I'm pretty sure that it would take you a lot of time due to the number of uh, variables. Oh yeah, by the way I forgot to mention this, the, the chosen section size for, the, um, for for instance the diagonals is based on the normative load which is applied on the specific element uh, type. So there's just, there is no optimization uh, taking place between the different elements in the same group. Uh, this can of course be done, but it's questionable whether this is actually a practical uh, thing to do. And besides, uh, it will make the optimization process uh, dramatically slower. Okay, so finally a solution is found. The optimization has run, run for 30 minutes and I'll quickly show the first three results. The first result actually includes a very small penalty factor, but as we can see in the unity checks, the obtained solution is quite good. Uh, in, the, in this result, a mass of about 11 tons is found, with, which seems uh, reasonable cons considering the 60 meter span. The truss is 7.9 meters high, and there are only four segments included. Uh, of course, we could argue uh, on a considerable height on and whether uh, the lower height would actually be uh, more desirable over a lower mass. But that's another discussion altogether. The second result is a, a tiny bit heavier, but it is somewhat reduced in height. And the difference between this result and the third result is that a smaller section is chosen for the third result, which uh, results in a, a smaller penalty factor being included. Okay, this was a truss optimization. Uh, I'll provide the download link for the grasshopper definition in the description on YouTube, so you can try some setups for yourself, uh, as well as some other sites you may find interesting. There will be a second video in the near future uh, in which I'll explore the optimization possibilities for this uh, tube truss bridge, which is based on the M8 Hardhill pedestrian bridge in the UK. Please email me any questions you might have or post them on the Gym Geometry Gym website. And uh, I'd like to thank you for watching this video.